Welcome back. Uh, it's been, I'd say, a couple months since my last video. I've been uh, tied up working on tax returns. We just had that tax return due date a couple of days ago. Um, so now I'm back making videos. So in this video, I'm going to walk through some tips on cash flow management for businesses to consider. Um, you know, we've been helping out a lot of businesses ever since COVID around cash flow management. And with the SVB, matter that happened, uh, I'd say, what was it, like two or three months ago, um, there's even more of a focus on businesses, where they have their cash, what they're using their cash for, um, and items like that. So in this video, it's all about cash flow management. And at the end, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna walk through like a cash flow burn analysis, a very simple tool. You can kind of build this on Excel. We, we have our own, um, and then in, in the tips, I'm going to talk through a couple software tools that we recommend if you don't want to do this manually, especially if you're using Xero or QuickBooks Online to manage your accounting. There's some tools out there that can kind of, I don't want to say automate your cash flow forecasting, but can kind of make the process a lot easier. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the, the, the comments section in the video and I'll respond to them. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna walk through a couple slides here on just some uh, cash flow management tips for businesses just to consider. Um, and then I'll follow up um, toward the end of this with an Excel template that I built out um, to kind of walk through cash flow burn and the importance of um, kind of doing a cash flow projection and why it's different than like an income statement or a balance sheet. So these are just a couple points here. First off, um, you should consider opening up two bank accounts. So if you're banking with just say Chase, right, for your business, and you just have one bank account, you should open up another one, at least another one, a second one, and you can call this like your tax account. And it's good for, it, it's more like discipline purposes where Every month as you're looking through your financials, um, you can move a little bit to this tax account knowing that you got to pay quarterly taxes. That's one way to use this second account. Another way is for payroll, right? So knowing that you have X amount to spend on payroll every month, you can put it in this other bank account and you don't touch it. Um, and then in light of the whole SVB um, matter that, that came up, um, having two bank account, two, or having accounts at two different banks. So having one at, with like a Bank of America or Chase, a big bank, and another one, a small regional bank, um, to kind of get access to like a line of credit or a loan. You know, working with smaller banks, it's easier to do that. Um, so that's that's tip number one. Tip number two is scheduling out vendor payments. Um, over the next like 10 to 16 weeks. And this is kind of part of that like cash flow projection. Um, and you know, the template I, I'll show you at the end of this video is more of a 12 month, but you should kind of break it out into weeks and think of all your vendors that you pay. Um, you know, if you have office rent, you're paying that once a month, right? Um, but you want to break that down of what time of the month you're going to pay that. And then, you know, service providers, right? Like attorneys, accountants, um, software subscriptions that you have, um, wages, right? And then you want to put like a letter next to each of those vendors to see which ones are critical, right? So, um, you know, if there's software that you got to pay in order to keep your business up and running, I'd say that's, that's pretty critical, but maybe attorney fees, you know, maybe that might be able to, you know, swing into the next month, right? Um, and they're not going to charge you any interest and stuff. So you might code that as a B. Um, so when you're in a crunch, you can kind of look at, okay, what vendors do we have to pay? What are the A ones that are just critical? We've got to pay these vendors. So kind of looking at how you pay vendors when you pay them is a good cash flow management tip. So no another one here is the cash flow projection, right? So 10 to 16 weeks, um, we, we kind of like to look at at least 13 weeks, right? Um, to 16 weeks. And you can do this in Excel. You can do it in Google Sheets, but there's also apps out there. There's Float App. There's Cashflow Frog. There's another one called, uh, the Cashflow Tool. 
what these apps do is they connect to, if you're using like QuickBooks Online, if you're using Xero, these apps will connect to them and it will make the projection process a lot easier. Um, so you're not starting from scratch because what it does is it pulls in um, actual activity and then you can kind of build off of that. But kind of just having this projection to begin with is is a good start to kind of, you know, manage your whole, you know, vendor payment process. Um, next up is understanding the purpose of your cash and its use. So a lot of people, you know, they get, you know, they're getting paid from, you know, customers. Um, they're taking out loans from banks. So they have a lot of cash, but then they don't think about how best to use it. Right. And what's the purpose of, of their cash? Is it, you know, reinvesting in the company? So is it building additional features? Um, if you're building those software, are you, um, is the plan to give out year end bonuses, right? So you want to, you know, accrue for that and, and save for that. So you really want to look at what's the purpose on cash. So sometimes it's this, you're running a lifestyle business. It's a very profitable business. You don't want to expand anything and you're just getting paid and then you're going to pay yourself, which is fine. Maybe the purpose of that cash is to kind of, you know, give you, you know, distributions every quarter or, or, or you know, increase your salary. Um, so you really want to look at, you know, what's the purpose of your cash? Um, next is your, your bankers, right? So, um, I think a lot of businesses during COVID found the importance of, of their bankers, right? And, um, you know, a lot of them, a lot of these companies kind of bank to the larger banks, larger banks kind of don't cater that well to smaller companies. Um, but these smaller banks do, and it's, it's good to kind of have a check-in with them because they can kind of, you know, give you some insight on your business, give you some guidance, uh, let you know how they might be able to help you out. They might, you know, if you're looking for customers, they might be able to make intros. So it's, it's always good to kind of have it, you know, at least once a quarter. If you can't do it once a quarter, do it two times a year with your banker. Um, make sure your cash is safe. And what I, what I mean by that is you're just say you have a, a, you know, abundance of cash. You're not investing it all in a crypto or some risky assets, right? You want to, you know, I mean, this is to run your business. Um, if you're going to day trade with it, if you're going to do something else with it, you should take that out of the business. So take a distribution, uh, salary yourself out and then do this risky stuff outside your business. Cause your business, the cash in the business is run the business to grow the business. It's not to invest in, you know, risky stuff. Um, another item is. Uh, having creating like metrics internally and, you know, more on the cash side of things, right? So you may um, say, all right, if we have a cash balance of $50,000 or more, we're in good shape. We're in the green zone. If we have a cash balance between $20,000 and $49,000, we're in the yellow zone, right? It's kind of a warning. Um, we expect to get some payments from customers, so it's not a red flag yet. But if you have cash less than 20 grand and you're not expecting any customer payments, that's kind of like red zone. I'm just making these metrics up, but you should kind of create something internally to kind of really manage your cash and what level. And this kind of goes to, goes along with the run rate too, um, is how much cash do you have to run the business before it's, you know, unfortunately you're gonna to have to close it down or you're gonna to have to get, you know, additional investors or a line of credit. Um, you should document the process for paying vendors. So in a perfect scenario, you want to have, um, someone reviewing and someone, someone reviewing and someone actually paying it. So you got approval reviewer and a payer. Um, you know, sometimes for smaller companies, it's tough, right? So someone that's reviewing it is also proving it and paying it. But you want to document the process. And there's a lot of apps out there. We like bill.com. There's Melio, where your vendors can kind of send bills to these platforms. And then these platforms allow like a reviewer, an approver, and a payer. Um, so we would recommend um, setting something up like that. And then... Um, another cash flow tip here is creating a cash crisis contingency plan, especially with the whole SVB, 
is you want to kind of diversify your cash, but you want to have some contingency plan in place. If something were like, like this were to happen again, um, you know, it happened in 20, 2009. It just happened in 2023. So, you know, the odds of this unfortunately happen again, um, is high and you just want to have some type of plan in place on how to deal with this. Right. Um, and it could be as simple as, all right, we've got at least two bank accounts. One is for payroll and we're going to have enough cash in this payroll account in this bank account to process payroll for two months. Right. In the worst case scenario. Um, so that's that. And then on the last slide here is, when you're doing services for customers, you want to pay, you want to invoice your customers right away. You don't want to do services on March 1st and send an invoice out on March 31st, right? Because that's, you probably did the work in February. You're invoicing, you know, almost like two months out, right? So the key is to get those invoices out to the customers as soon as the service is done. And also you should think about a flat monthly fee and a recurring model. So if you're doing the same type of service to your customer, like every month or every quarter, maybe work with them and say, all right, we'll charge you a thousand dollars per month. And you're going to get charged on the first of the month. You'll get their credit card. You get their bank information. Um, and you just charge their card. It gets charged automatically. There's a lot of, you know, software platforms that do that. So you can predict your cash flow. There's no chasing accounts receivables and um, it's just a predictable model. Um, that's, that's like an, an ideal situation. Um, and then along with this of issuing invoices to customers is you want to monitor your AR, your accounts receivable. Oftentimes businesses will send out invoices. They're running their business. Next month they send more invoices, but this is part of the whole like cash flow cycle they kind of get locked into where at some point those invoices that they sent out in March, now it's June and they still haven't been paid. Then what happens is they try to reach out to the customer and that customer has gone out of business, right? Or that customer is hard to find. So you, you want to make sure it's like a weekly kind of basis to manage this, your AR, and you want to make sure it's always current, you know, 30 days or less. Um, establishing a line of credit, right? With a bank, it's, it's not bad to have a line of credit and it's not going to cost you, right? You, you're only going to pay for it when you kind of dip into it and borrow against it. But if you just have something, um, even if it's, you know, $50,000, a hundred thousand dollars, um, in a case of emergency, you can always dip into it. Um, and if you do dip into it and you know, you're going to get paid from customers like the following week, then you can replenish that money that you borrowed against it. And then finally, um, talking to vendors and seeing if you can extend the term. So if you get a bill from your attorney and they say it's due in 15 days, can you ask them, hey, can we extend it to 30 days, right? They're going to get paid, but it gives you some more time to kind of, again, managing the cash flow, right? Um, also, consider using credit cards, right? So if you start charging on your credit cards in March, right, those items that you're buying in March, you don't have to pay this off until probably the end of April, your next billing cycle. So it buys you more time, plus you'll be able to get points and all that. So these are some cash flow tips that, you know, businesses should consider. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And then I'm going to follow up here shortly with this other add on, I don't want to say video, but just to kind of walk you through what a cash flow forecast. All right. Is. So here's a cash flow kind of projection. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, this is a very simplified version. Um, it, you know, I haven't used this in a while here, but, um, cause I use, I like to use like other, other tools out there. Um, as I mentioned in, in the previous video, but what, what this does, and this is different than like your balance sheet in your, um, in your income statement, because your, your balance sheet kind of says, okay, this is what our ending cash position is. This is what our ending inventory, you know, as of a certain date, right? Like as of, you know, April of 2023. Um, but it doesn't look into the future. Same with the profit loss statement it says, okay, as of April, here's our total revenue. Here's our total expenses. Here's our profit. 
And there's a lot of businesses out there that are profitable, but they don't have any cash, right? So, you know, the cash comes in, they're spending it right away. Um, you know, either they have debt, they have a lot of other stuff. So what this cash flow forecast does is, you know, this, this, this is very simplified too, but the first line here is what your ending cash is and what you're projected to have um, in the bank. So at the beginning of, of April, you start out with $5,000, okay? And you get $10,000 of sales, um, and then you got a loan from the bank of $50,000, okay? And you can see here, once I added that 50 grand, this cash, right, your beginning May balance is gonna go up, okay? So, and then to say you put another $7,500 into the business, you can see these balances kind of go up as you do that. Then you got to look at cash paying out, right? So there's advertising. Um, you got contract labor, right? So you got contractors working for you. You got, um, you know, office expense, right? And so you get rent, it's $500, right? Um, and you can, you can add to this, but you're thinking about all the cash Again, this is cash going out of the business. So this is our, this is, isn't you get a bill from an attorney, but you haven't paid it, right? Because that's not cash going out of the business. But in that example, just say you did get a bill in April, you're not going to pay it in April. So there's no cash impact to the month of April. But just say, and the bill is $5,000, um, say it's under other expenses instead of so here's april here's may here's june you're going to pay that five thousand dollars in june right um and that's what this is for right so you can kind of project out um when you when you when you're gonna get these bills and where you're going to pay it so rent that's pretty consistent right five hundred dollars a month you can kind of carry that over but what this is showing you is all right you know it, we're good here with cash and this is assuming nothing else changes we're good in, with cash through march of 2024 right so we got enough runaway of cash to make it now you can see here i didn't fill out all these ex different expenses but just say um just say there's some big expense here and i'll just put this under other other expenses right so um you get forty thousand dollars here and you had you know five thousand dollars here you can see and this is cash going out how that impacts your cash right so now you're kind of dwindling here because in october you spent a lot and then you spent some more in february you can see how your ending cash is is decreasing so this is kind of what a cash flow forecast looks like and you can see this is on a monthly basis so what we recommend is kind of looking at a weekly basis so breaking this out into you know four weeks a month or maybe five weeks in a month um so you're probably looking at the first three months three or four months and how are you using cash each week so you're kind of diving deeper into that um but doing something like this will help you know all right um and, and this is the tough part right with the customers so again just say you send an invoice in april right you may not get paid until June. So you want to predict when you're going to get that cash. So that's why having customers that are paying you the same amount every month and you have them locked up with your ACH or credit card, um, then, then this cash coming in is more predictable. Um, and that's why sending out an invoice later is going to hurt you because maybe that customer may pay you a month or two out. Um, and then just say, I'll, I'll change up the scenario here. Just say you spend another 25 grand here, right? And you look at kind of doing your projections here, right? In April, you're like, all right, January, we're gonna run out of cash, it's negative, right? So at the end of December here, we're gonna be in negative cash. That means we gotta get a loan, we have to do something um, uh, bet between now and then, right? Or we gotta get more customers or something. Um, or you can kind of look at it like, all right, we plan to hire someone that's going to be, you know, $10,000 a month, um, starting, or actually I'll put it down starting October here, right? So it's $10,000 a month.
and you can see right away you're going negative here, right? So in order to hire that person, you got to figure out ways on how do you bring in more cash to pay that person, or you might not be able to make that hire, right? Because by paying that person, now you're going to run out of cash by the end of October, right? Um, so that's why this is a good exercise and you can, you know, set it, you can take a look at it once a week, once a month. Uh, we recommend, you know, looking at this stuff weekly, especially if you're in a cash flow jam now or it becomes an issue. Um, but this is, yeah, the cash flow kind of projection analysis. Again, this is very simple, but it's, it's a good exercise to go through with the business.